Welcome to Warblog. Today I'm going to look at whatever I can really. Um, it's either this or this. They're both sort of interesting. Um, but they're both simple. And they're both Afghanistan. And they're both the 6th of May. But the Baglan province is probably more interesting. Um, only because it's quite a lot happening. Um, they start off taking, I think, this sort of burger district, which I sort of didn't put on the map as a focus. It's more up here, really. Um, and then they take Narim district, sort of. So we've got Narim there. Now, I don't really know where exactly these places are, but this is the... Um, I should maybe put that in a different font. Bagla Baglani Markzay district, which they take. This is the sort of capital, I think, of Baglan, and they take this sort of checkpoint, or they take a checkpoint near here. Uh, I don't really know what's happening. I mean, no one really does, I guess. Um, but so the Taliban sort of take quite a few places in Baglan, and so they they actually claim to have control of the province or they uh whatever it is um and but the he shouldn't be there i'll have to adjust that so if we um refresh this if he's gone he's a, he's a reinforcement that comes in on turn six um so, but basically the Afghan forces announced that they are reinforcing this place, whatever it is, Shari Khomri. Um, and they pushed the Taliban back. I mean, I think, I can't actually remember which one it was, but I seem to recall really that one of the article states that there's, there's only 34,000 people in this province. It's when you start to consider how few people there are that you realise, you know, how less stable it is inherently going to be. Because even when you consider 34,000 people, the nature of the, the terrain, the logistics, the road networks, um, you know, half those people will be women, let's say, so that's only sort of 17,000 of those that would be even able to fight, you can maybe half that again to sort of like um, 8,000. Um, presumably there's a division between Taliban and Afghan sort of factions. I mean, even roughly that 4,000, then you look at the number of people that would actually be bothered to take up arms on either side. You don't need too many people, you know, even just 200 people would be a significant proportion of the population at any one given time and location to, to actually do this sort of stuff. And so when they say they've taken over Baglan, well, you can see, well, okay, I can understand that. And when the Afghan forces say they've pushed the Taliban back out and out by sending some troops there, you can appreciate that. Because it's sort of probably, I would guess, I don't know, I don't want to say too much, but it, maybe it's, a, you know, it's, it's quite a, a wilderness area. Or, you know, it's quite remote and you know because of that they're able to sort of you know carry out these ebbs and flows of control over areas that you know are, are relatively sparsely populated I mean if there are only sort of 34,000 people in the province you know you just have to start dividing that you know even even amongst what we can see here and this is only a portion of it you know, it's going to be at least 34 of these, so there's only going to be a thousand in each place. And they're probably all concentrated in the cities, so there'll be sort of 2,000 here, 500 here, whatever. But, um, so I'm just going to sort of go through the motions and see what, what I can do about getting down to here. Maybe I should play it.
Okay, so it's not difficult to push the police out. We can have another attack at them, I guess. Routed the wrong way, really. And it does state that the um, the Afghan government declared that they had done a strategic withdrawal from the area. You could look at it as a route, but. We eliminated that unit. Which is why I chose him in preference to this one. Okay, so that's the first turn. So we've managed to take Burka province and move into uh, Narim. Narim. Now I could put objective markers on everything, but it's all sort of relative and you know proportionate, really. So and I think they're going to do their strategic withdrawal. We'll leave him there to capture that. Well, we need to come along this road, which is why these people are sort of where they are, really. Hmm. That's as far as I can get. I think he can't move because he started a bit further back. Yeah, 0 0.6, 0 0.6. So, we didn't want to do that. Well, I guess we can do that. Okay, well, they're strategically going to withdraw. I was send him back here actually.
Okay, well, he's going to withdraw to there because he feels a bit safe. Oh, we've got an attack helicopter. Let's attack these units. Yeah. One damage. Let's leave them there to recover. They're busy changing all the signs, destroying all the Afghan government things. Now that was unusual, but they shot the helicopter down. Oh dear. Okay, so we've got some reinforcements now. He's recovered. Okay, so they're now going to reinforce the capital. and push these units back. They eliminated them. It's payback for the helicopter. So that's it really at this situation, at this position. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> really busy. Slow on this game for a while now, um, but I think it, it's it's interesting. I, I keep trying to read the um, you know the write-ups on all of these things, and it, it's just a bit beyond me to fully understand it because you can't just you can't find any of these places on the map. Um, you know, I search for them on Google Maps and probably a balance of disinformation you know they changed all the names so you can't just quite google it and, and find it on a map um but and also the difference between sort of who's reporting and uh, and you know relating to to what's happening um but i think the thing that took me was when i looked at the live map thing there are lots of things lots of like gun symbols representing offensives and they're all basically all Taliban offensives and it does recall I do recall that um, the term their spring offensive and, and I haven't seen it termed that way in any of the reports and so you know it's 
that's probably why I haven't sort of thought, oh, this is their spring offensive. But that must be what it is. You know, they must be sort of on this spring offensive um, because they're doing quite significant things all over the place. I mean, the, this one and the other one, the dam, are just the ones that seem game worthy. The, the other ones are sort of quite similar, but not so strategic. Um, and I'm less inclined to sort of, you know, write them up as a map, but you know, they're, they're pushing all over the country. And of course, it's all sort of coordinated with the US withdrawal, um, apparently. But, you know, I think you've got to say, well, is it really? I mean, is not is this just not their usual spring offensive? I mean, do they feel that they need to do some spring cleaning or something like that? I'm not being wholly facetious in that. I mean, it could be that, you know, just like in Vietnam, they, they would do their their offensives before the rain se rainy season. Uh, you know, the time of year was sort of important for pushing their their agenda militarily. Um, and this could be, you know, the same thing. I mean, they've, they've been, you know, holding up throughout the winter, presumably gathering resources, gaining strength, and the spring is, you know, a time of growth and opportunity. Uh, and it could be a part and parcel of what, what's happening, intensified by the, um, the US withdrawal. But the fact that the Afghans can push them out, I think it is, you know, not, not unusual, but it's all about holding these places. Um, and when you sort of see, you know, a large mechanised force like this coming through, they could probably chase these Taliban units, you know, right off the map. And that's probably what they would do. But again, you've got to sort of think, well, OK, we're taking control of that, but we could come up here and take, you know, these, this is quite a sizable place. I haven't really sort of got my head around exactly what it is. Um, but I should maybe put all that as sort of urban or a couple of towns in there. We could take that, you know, put objective markers on all of this, and you could have a sort of a cat and mouse game across this whole board because there could be more Taliban than there are Afghan units, but the Afghan units are tougher and stronger. Um, and it's the same old story, really, but it's still quite interesting. Um, but that's that anyway. I'll leave it at that, and um, I'll speak to you later. Cheerio.